Hey guys, it's Aiden, and this is part three of the Bruise and Scar Wax Wound series. Today, we're gonna to be combining the techniques to create a broken nose slash black eye look. So let's get to it. As this tutorial is a combination of the previous two, I'm gonna speed this up and then jump in whenever necessary if it's a new concept or something to reiterate. So I'm just cleansing the skin as usual. And then next, I'm gonna pull up my reference pictures. Now it's really important that when you find reference pictures, there are real anatomical injuries or wounds. If it's a makeup, you never know if that artist was referring to something anatomical. So I'm gonna take some prosate on a Q-tip and just apply it to the area we're gonna do the makeup. A broken nose black eye typically will cause a cut right on the bridge of the nose, that wider part. So I'm just gonna apply a thin streak of prosate on that area. Prosade can also be lightly tapped like spirit gum to cause it to dry faster. Now I'm gonna take a small snake of scar wax and like the previous tutorial, we're gonna blend it over the prosade area. I'm gonna do what I can first with my fingers, blending it into the surrounding skin. Then I'm gonna come in with a tool to blend it out even further. And as always, you can come in with a little baby oil between these stages just to smooth it out. In the previous tutorial, we used a stipple sponge to create texture in the scar wax. Here I have a rubber thimble with little dots on it that'll help create and replicate the pore texture on the nose. And of course, a little baby oil to help cut back on that harsh texture. After adjusting the lighting a little bit, I'm going to take a small tool just to cut a small cut in the scar wax. In these kinds of injuries, there can be a little bit of a cut. It's really up to your preference and the circumstances of why you're doing the makeup. Now it's paint time. I'm going to go a little more in depth with how I'm layering the colors. So I'm going to start with a pinkish color. And that's just to bring in some of those red undertones that the skin has, especially in areas like the nose. And of course, you can always buff it off with a makeup sponge. And now to cut back on the intensity of the red, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow mixed with a light flesh tone and just dab that over the area. It's important to blend it past the prosthetic area because that'll help blend the surrounding skin in with the wound. Now I'm going to darken the interior of the cut, so I'm going to start with a deep dark red on the bottom, then I'm going to take a more pink blood red on the edges of the cut. Now it's bruise time. I'm going to be using my bruise wheel for this because alcohol activated paints are not that safe around the eyes, it can cause irritation and burning. So I'm gonna start with the greenish yellow color as a sort of base right under the bags of the eyes. Now with a brush, I'm going to apply the deep purple bruise color right on the orbital bone below the eye. I'm gonna make sure I keep referring to my reference pictures. And one thing I noticed is that these types of wounds aren't that symmetrical. So I'm applying a little more to the right side as that's where it looks like the impact was. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm just going to keep enhancing the paint job to really get it to where I want to be. I added a little bit of that green yellow color to the nose which I later regretted. I didn't think it looked that good but it's all a learning process. And then I also did some of that deeper dark purple color just to intensify the bruising under the eyes. And now it's blood time. So like in the previous tutorial, I mix some of the blood I have with dish soap and that'll help it stick to the skin a little better and look more realistic. And I'm gonna apply a tiny bit inside the cut. And then for this look, I'm also gonna apply blood right underneath the nose like a bloody nose. And with some last minute paint touch-ups, the look is complete. That wraps up the Bruise and Scar Wax Wound series. Stay tuned for next week where we start looking at how to do flat molds and prosthetics. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.